We are Chris and Bex, the Nomadic Crowbar, and today's episode is built on triumphs and failures. Come to Papa, old dirty calorifier. Mainly failures. But we are moving in the right direction on our Project Narrowboat. Yeah, a few years ago, two days in after purchasing this boat for our new off-grid life, we obviously discovered some massive problems. So we need to fix the boat up first and then head off on our huge off-grid quest. What the hell is going on with the hot water situation on this boat? Yes, we've run into a big problem there, surprise, surprise. I'm finally going to finish off the kitchen floor. Yeah, can you guess how that goes? I'm also going to educate you on how to make your own Chrissy Crowbot fresh bread in literally five minutes. It's the easiest recipe ever. Yes, we are becoming one of those narrow boaty cooking channels and I'm an expert at it. I'm better than any other channel that's ever attempted it. Guess who's back? So our pet duck went missing last week. We found her, have you? Both back together again. He's got his girlfriend back. The return of the great Sopranella. Going with oats today. She's the only one we really care about. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? Another week, another big bad ball ache on the Whistling Wombat, our first ever narrowboat. So let's give you guys the bad news. Is it bad news or good news about the hot water tank? So after much deliberation and to in and fro in and taking on board all of the comments from you lovely subscribers, as well as speaking to lots of other people, we have decided to go with our gut and return the calorifier <laughs> for the third time. Yeah, thank God we've got all you guys helping I mean, you guys have been saying it for weeks. This isn't a vertical tank, but it was sold to us on the terms that it was a universal tank. There's been so many like little elements to it, hasn't there, that just didn't sit quite right. Like, it's been bothering me, and even when we kind of rang them up, Personally, I still didn't feel completely confident. No. I don't know what you think. The tank had come with two different sets of instructions. Then, of course, we've got the sticker on the box. It oh. actually says horizontal on the box. And we don't know much about calorifiers, but supposedly they're set up with all the elements that sit on the insides of the tank in certain areas so that they're positioned and work properly if, if either the tank is a vertical one or a horizontal one. So in a little while, I've got to start my big hunt for Becca's new sander, which I broke in the last episode. It was old. It was old, I'm telling you guys. So here we go again, back in the calorifier room. God, what is this, Groundhog Day or something? Off it comes again, hopefully, for the last time. Someone hand me my adjustable. Ah yes, it would seem that Lefty Lucy is my best friend. She's free! Released from her shackles once again. She shall live to fight another day in her box. As she gets carted off and taken back to the warehouse. Oh yeah, but I better move the brackets back round again first. <sighs> now this feels familiar. Get it back in, get it back into the nest. Do you want me to lift it into the nest or are you going to lift it into the nest? I'll put it in, I think. So before I can start work on the kitchen floor, there's one thing that Becca still needs to finish off. So this is the kitchen before, and this is the kitchen after we put the floor panels back down. But the hatch has got quite a few little spaces in it which Bex wants to sort out. Right, so I'm taking a break from the calorifier and focusing my attention on the hatch in the kitchen because Chris keeps badgering me to do it. I've mixed up two different colours of wood filler to try and kind of match the colour, the tone of the wood so it doesn't sort of stand out so much. I just want to fill in some of the gappier bits in the hatch where the wood's expanded and this that and the other so there's my mixture fortunately this wood filler can be painted or, or whatnot it should retain the tone of whatever you put on afterwards looks like a pretty good match to me so now for the other gaps for some reason this wood filler is exceptionally difficult to squeeze out of the tube oh my god So that's all filled in. It looks a bit ropey at the minute because it'll need to dry and be sanded back and then it may need some touch-ups but we'll see. But all done. 
So this breaks up the week a little bit to work on sort of small jobs on the narrow boat. Do you remember these lovely copper pipe kitchen utensil um, holdy things that Bex made about a year ago? All bespoke. She made the cooking spice rack here too. Just that are normal copper pipes from B&Q. The girl is handy. She's very handy to have on the narrow boat with you. I'm pretty useless, but we all know that. Anyway, we still have one of these kitchen utensil holdy things to put up. So today we are back in the kitchen. We are getting round to some of those little niggly jobs that always get pushed to the back of your mind and you never get round to doing them. We are putting up the kitchen roll holder. So we've had a little look around the kitchen at sort of different areas. We thought it might clash up against the white, but the problem is there's nowhere else really to put it, is there, Bex? No, it's either in like a fire risk area or just somewhere that you're just gonna catch it all the time when you walk past. So we figure we'll put it where the old kitchen roll holder was, which was here, nice and out of the way. The copper looks really nice against the white. It's nice like that. It's just when you put this on, it starts to look a bit like a dentist's chamber or something. Yeah. Drilly willy. Hunt for three brass screws is a uh, spiralling out of control here at Crowbot Tower. She's been doing this for about 15 minutes now. There's a reason for this madness because I've put those brackets up before and the screws, because they're like iron, the metal reacts and the screws just rust to crap, whereas the brass ones don't. Will she find it? Tune into next week's episode for the, the conclusion. Try not to come through the other side. I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Those pesky flatheads again. Thanks for all of your suggestions, by the way, which I've realised I haven't taken on board at all for this particular operation. <laughs> but next time I will. Oh dear, two boys, we're all trying to get Sopranella. I think that's what scared Sopranella off last time. She's quick, isn't she? Oh, he's lost her again. There we go, all done. Yeah. <laughs> Just needs a little bit of glue. There she is. Come on. Hell a lot of duck stuff going on these days. No, no DIY, just duck things. So, a bit of super glue later and she's up on the wall. Looks great, doesn't it? This is all super glued in. So in the last episode, I accidentally broke Becca's beloved sander. Have you broken my sander? Well, I haven't. It's just sort of stopped work. So, here we are in B&Q. It's like it's my birthday, because I'm getting a new sander today, courtesy of Chris, who broke my old one. You get a nice, new, cheap one. It's nice, isn't it? Spot on. I prefer them when they have a bit more of a handle, or like an attachment, where you can hold it here a bit like a sort of grinder. We did have a little look online, and you can pick them up, sort of. 30, 40, 50 quidish. You don't have to go for like a 100 quid one, do you? Oh, this 70 pounds one looks nice. Look at the handle on that. A bit disappointing, really. I was all excited. Shame on you being q Bex voiced her opinion that a handle is a must on the orbital sander. And yeah, they don't seem to make them with handles anymore. I could choose this uh, sander then. Damn, I had that one in here. Unfortunately, Tool Station didn't offer anything great either, so we're heading next door to the trusty old screw fix. Anyone else think Chris looks like a chimney sweep? Still a bit on a finger in your eye, ain't Jim, chimney, Jim, chimney. Is that just me? Home of the Titan screw fix. Let's see if we can get you a little Titan sander. See, that's what I mean. Anything in the sort of £30 price range. I, I mean, I don't want a £340. Pound, <laughs> that's but what you she see, means. it's got a handle like that. I think we might have to look online. So ASAP Supplies have kindly accepted the return. These, these guys seem to have a really, really good customer service. Come to Papa. Old dirty calorifier. And then we're gonna get in a proper vertical tank. It's a 
something exciting has just turned up in the post for Bex. Got a surprise! What is it? Oh, is it a sander? You'll have to uh, open it up and find out. Can't wait to have a sander back in my life. Do you think it's going to be the right one though? Because you're very strict. It's she was very strict, not. guys. She wanted a handle on it. Had to have a handle. So after the brutal murder of my last Sander, <laughs> the one and only Chris. That was on its way out, man. Da, 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 da. Oh, handles. B and Q couldn't supply it. Tool station couldn't supply it. Screwfix, the mother nest of the Titan, didn't supply it. Wix supplied it. Do you tell them that it was actually me who found it? <laughs> <laughs> Oi! I meant to be part of the act. <laughs> I meant to be part of the storyline. She's giving it up. This was cheap as chips. I had to have one with the handle. Extra 30 quid for one with a handle. It does feel a bit flimsier, if I'm honest. You chose it. <laughs> so that means I can get on today with something very special. Bex ain't even going to use the sander. I'm actually going to use it. It hasn't got a speed setting on it. You chose it. It doesn't have the speed setting. Well, we can send it back as an extra little. So you can push down on it probably. You don't push down. Like that, that is how motors are burned out. Ha! Huh, so here we go. Powerful machine. Light user effort only required. So if you don't believe me, it's there in black and white. Okay, beautiful, lovely, boaty people. It is about one o'clock in the morning here and we are ready in Crowbot's kitchen to make Papa Crowbot's special chilli bread. Not chilli bread, it's just normal bread. Okay, this is literally the quickest, fastest bread recipe known to mankind. It is so, so easy. The ingredients you need are as follows. Plain flour, fast action dried yeast, dash of salt, filtered water, purer than a baby's blood. My secret ingredient, chilli seeds. Good God. We're not putting chilli seeds in. I'm going to bung the recipe in the description down below. It is, like I say, so easy. I make it every weekend. I've never made it, ever. <laughs> this is the first time. Mama Crowbot gave me this recipe because we are in a tiny house, a tiny space, and sometimes doing big, badass recipes, you know, there's just no blooming room, is there? For you guys that live on narrow boats, or just if you guys just want to mess about at home and make some really tasty, easy bread, follow these steps to perfection. <laughs> I've never made bread before, ever. What time is it? It's baking time! <laughs> Oi, I'm Mr. Cookery Showman tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I want all the viewers to know that this comes from my twin cerebral cortex. Yes, my enlarged brain. We all have disabilities. Mine's an enlarged brain. Some would say it's not a disability. For those that live on a narrow boat, you know where we're coming from. You just throw anything in the cupboards and you don't really have a specific area. You just throw it in, you just launch it in. No, uh, I'm forever cleaning the cupboards and Chris comes along and causes chaos in the cupboards. It's really irritating. It's alive! Woo! In the words of uh, Jamie Oliver, a naughty little, little bit of plain flour. Get that in there, the naughty. Just, just throw it in. That's all Jamie Oliver's all about, and all that sort of stuff. Throw that in the bowl. Ooh. Next up, all you need is a wooden uh, spoon thing. That's not a wooden spoon, but a wooden thing. And you use that end, supposedly, the old uh, pokey bit. The bit that's meant for poking people. A poke. So, a bit of yeast in there. That's pretty much it, really. Now you come onto the, the water. What you don't want to do is roll it out in the morning with a rolling pin or anything because you want the bread to have all the little bubbles inside it. That's uh, one of my secret tips. <laughs> I wouldn't work it no? a lot. Well that's it then. That's good to go. So now what you want to do is just cover that up and then just rest it for about eight to ten hours. So that's why we're doing it at night. And then in the morning, well, you'll see won't you? 
hours later and hopefully this has risen and now it's ready to put in the oven. Be sure to give it a little poke, just a cos, I suppose. Heaps of flour is essential because this stuff is sticky, guys. Mega soft. Don't know if that's how it's meant to be. How am I going to get it on this, this baking paper? Turn it into a sort of baguette. Okay, we've waited about 25 minutes. Let's see what the outcome's like. Okay, it has uh, formed into one giant piece of crowbot bread. It looks spot on, I think. First attempt, isn't it? I think you probably get used to it a bit more. Woo! Look at that. My first attempt at narrowboat bread engineering. It does look like a mess. Look at that! Oh, wow. oh. I'll try there, yeah? Probably about 10 inch blade. Oh. Like a sort of sourdoughy type thing. Wow. Good? Mmm. The big test will be Sopranella. Cheers, my dear. Another day, another belt sander. It's like raining sanders around here at the minute, yeah. isn't it? Multi speed, dual action sander. It's got two handles. Ooh. Put your handle for locating where it's got to go, not pushing. It's got your, your speed set in there. Yeah, that was the thing we missed on the Wix one, really, not having that. Feels, feels quite nice with that little handle there, like that. But you don't push on that, do you? You just guide it. If anyone hadn't clocked this, Chris loves to dodge responsibility for things that he does wrong. <laughs> it's hard to claim responsibility when you never do anything wrong. And herein lies the problem. Yeah, it clicks on there, doesn't it? That's a little dust bucket. Your last one never had a dust bucket, did it? That's it a... No, it did have an attachment for one, but I think over the years that's been lost. It was quite old. If you look after things, they last a lifetime. I mean, that might be something that you yeah. want to think about. <laughs> Everyone that watches the channel knows how well I look after my tools. Okay, so finally we've got the sander that we need, and finally we can get this floor finished in the kitchen here. Hatchy hatchy! So last year when Bex went away for a week, I sealed the whole floor here with a special sort of oil, but I left the hatch as Bex still had some work to finish on it. Now, we're nearly at the end of the episode, so can you guess how this went? Won't come up. How would you get it up? A screwdriver. Won't come up. Let's get Bex to help. Let's get the boss to step in. Come on, crow boss. Didn't want to damage it and shove a screwdriver in there. Thanks. So we're going to unscrew the little handle here because we don't want to get it all scratched up from the sander. Pull that bloody thing, whack that in. Here we go again. Becca's lovely new sander. Whack that in, glove up. Same old procedure, goggle up. Muzzle up. And head in for the kill. This time I'm going in extremely gentle. No excuses, we can't have this one buggering up, can we? And then once all this is sanded back, we can apply the oil, bung on the little handle again, and Bob's your uncle, the floor will be finished. Will it? This is why everything takes so long on the narrow boat. Run into another little problem. Plan was to get this kitchen hatch finished off, get it oiled up, get it all nice and sealed so it all ties in with the kitchen floor and then the kitchen floor would pretty much be fully done. Fortunately, lots of cracks and the filler hasn't really done its job. Not actually sure it's the filler's fault, it's more probably the, the hatch's fault because these side bits on the hatch are a bit wobbly, look. So it wobbles a little bit 
which has probably led to us taking it out and all the filler just cracking. Look at that, it looks awful. It's absolutely terrible. End one here is, look at that, that's it's nearly coming off now. To tighten up all the side bits on it before going in with the filler maybe. I mean, what a pain in the arse, eh? Wanted to get the kitchen floor finished off. It's looking very, very unlikely now because it looks like this is, this is a bigger job. Here we go again. Are we ever gonna go cruising? What do you reckon? I mean, it's getting silly now, isn't it? Make sure you unsubscribe, unlike, thumbs down, leave the channel if you don't want to see any more disasters. <laughs> One thing after the other, guys, isn't it? What a mess. Well, at least we got the new sander, eh?